So, I mean, last week I interviewed Kevin Halwa of the National Police Federation on their initiative opposing the formation of a provincial police force in Alberta. He made some good points, but for the most part, I felt they were pretty weak. I mean, he is with a police union and it's focused on the interest of the union rather than the public. And I don't fault them for that. That's just what their job is and that's what they're about. But it does make me question their motivations. How I did point out some, some reports claiming, you know, the, the formation of a provincial police force would come at a high cost. And this is true. I mean, everything from new branding to training facilities to cars to office facilities. I mean, it all has to be created or transferred. And it, it's going to cost a lot of money. That cost will be worth it, though. I mean, to begin with, the RCMP don't come free to the province. They're not some kind of gift, you know, from Ottawa. They're a contracted force. And Alberta taxpayers have to pay for it. They're, they're leased, essentially. We don't own them, but we pay for them. Some people maintain a misconception sometimes that the RCMP is a, some sort of federal expense and we would be giving something away by not maintaining them as our primary force in the province. And that's just not true. Every dollar spent on the RCMP services right now by the province can be dedicated to a provincial police force. And it should. And the RCMP wouldn't be going away totally. They, they remain as a federal force, at least while Alberta is still within Confederation, and scale down a great deal. They'd be something more akin to the American FBI uh, than a regular police force that's on the ground. And uh, the RCMP, I mean, let's face it, they've been hopelessly politicized. We've seen that in their reticence to follow through on criminal charges with the Prime Minister over the Aga Khan affair, despite their statement. This is from the RCMP saying they felt there were reasonable grounds that fraud was committed. But they said it wouldn't be in the public interest to follow through with charges on the Prime Minister. Well, isn't it in the public, you know, it isn't in the public's interest to have a prime minister who escapes criminal charges due to being the one who directly appoints the head of the national police force. That's what the problem is. The public interest had nothing to do with the RCMP decision. It was the interest of senior members in the force who knew that charging a prime minister would cost them their jobs. We've seen evidence of political interference from the prime minister's office into criminal investigations, whether it's the Nova Scotia shooting, or, you know, quite recently, or the SNC-Lavin affair. We have a government that doesn't think twice about violating rules and laws as they pursue their own and mask their own corruption. If members of the government are above the law of the land, we don't live in a democracy. A provincial police force won't be able to hold the federal government responsible for itself, but it will free Alberta police, uh, Alberta from the police actions directed by the federal government. Why should Albertans pay for a force that's going to act against the interests of the province uh, at the direction of the feds? I mean, for example, it's clear the federal government wants to disarm the nation. They're doing it incrementally through orders in council, as we've seen with the handgun freeze. And rest assured, there's going to be a seizure of firearms coming. I mean, it comes to that. Let the government, federal government, spend every penny then to track down and try and take the property from those law-abiding firearm Alberta, uh, owners in Alberta. We might not be able to stop the seizure while being within Confederation, but we sure don't have to aid the government in doing it. Let their little RCMP force try to deal with it. It's their job. Our provincial force can then just focus on real crime in the meantime. Localized policing would be more effective for the province anyways, particularly in rural areas. Mandates and priorities would be based on provincial needs rather than federal ideologies. Police members wouldn't constantly be parachuted across the country into regions where they have few connections and no understanding of the local culture or community, or community that they're, they're now with as the RCMP. And then a new provincial force could be crafted with a more modern mandate too. I mean, you know, Morale is terribly low among RCMP members right now, and the workplace culture has put uh, pressure on a lot of them, particularly women. This mess might not be repairable with the RCMP, but can be addressed and avoided if a brand new force takes these things into account upon its creation. So yes, a provincial police force would cost more during its initial formation, but it'll be worth every penny. The status quo is going to cost us a hell of a lot more in the long run if we let a government obsessed with control of citizens continue to control our local policing. Mm -hmm.